Actors who do their own stunts make sure to highlight it on their resume. It's a great skill to have. Makes you all the more desirable in Hollywood. But there's a reason there's a stunt guy and a safety coordinator. You never know what could go wrong. And not just stunts. From a near-fatal backflip to the day we almost lost two Hollywood icons, here are some actors who were almost killed on set. Charlie Theron wanted to be Aeon Flux in real life. Imagine almost dying for a film that ended up being ripped to shreds by critics. Because that's exactly what happened to Charlie Theron. Where she landed herself in the hospital over a stun for Aeon Flux. Doctors thought she might never walk again, or worse. Well, that was back in 2005, and we know that the South African actress made a full recovery, and even went on to become one of the highest grossing actresses of all time. Still, what happened during filming that almost killed her? As the most skilled fighter of the Monacan, as the most skilled fighter of the Monacans, an underground rebel group that aimed to overthrow the scientists of Brigan, Aeon Flux, Charlie Theron's character, had a huge burden on her shoulders. The sci-fi action film was based on a popular animation of the same name, which just doubled the weight of the actresses carried. This, by the way, was back in 2005, which now seems like almost a century back. With safety gear being less than ideal, Charlize also insisted on doing her own stunts for the film, and on the 10th day of shooting in Berlin, was attempting a backflip. Sounds harmless enough, right? What's the worst that can happen? Well, imagine attempting a backflip, missing your cue, falling face first on the ground, and twisting your neck. That does sound like the worst possible outcome, and that's what happened in this actress's case. She was rushed to the hospital in Berlin, with some people fearing the worst since she twisted her neck during the fall. Charlize took two weeks to recover and had to undergo physiotherapy for another six to recuperate and come back as the fierce Aeon Flux. And then the film tanked. But at least Charlize now has a good story to tell. Ed Harris refuses to talk about the abyss. Moving on to a film that did... Moving on to a film this time that did do well, we have the cult classic The Abyss. Now, if you've seen the sci-fi film, you'd expect that someone might have gotten hurt during production. The film followed a team of submariners, after all. The film followed a team of submariners, after all, and Ed Harris had to shoot a couple of his scenes underwater. Still, he seems to have made it out... Still, he seems to have made it out just fine, and even got a great movie out of it, too. All's well that ends well, right? You'd be surprised to know that despite it being one of the highlights of his career and probably one of the films he's most often remembered for, Ed Harris has refused to talk about The Abyss. You can't get a peep out of him, positive feedback or criticism, and that's because the actor's reportedly been so traumatized by what happened on set. In one scene, Ed had to be submerged underwater and hold his breath. He ran out of air somewhere in between the shot and signaled for an oxygen tank. Everything that could have gone wrong in the moment went wrong. The safety diver got stuck on the cable and couldn't make it down. Another crew member accidentally gave the actor an upside-down regulator, and finally the cameraman came over when Harris was nearly blue and gave him a regulator in the correct orientation. Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, Ed's co-star, later claimed that making the abyss was many things, but fun wasn't one of them. Reportedly, the diving incident rocked Ed to his core and the first thing he did when he caught his breath was punch the director for putting him in such a dangerous situation. He also reportedly broke down sobbing because of the trauma. Wish this would have been the only case of an actor coming face to face with death on set. Jackie Chan has a plastic plug in his head. Today, Jackie Chan can stand tall and proud, reminiscing about his decades-long career in film and television as one of the most prolific actors of his time. Probably one of the biggest things he's known for is doing all of his own stunts. That's right, it doesn't matter if it's near fatal, Jackie Chan will jump buildings, cross alligator infested waters, and do everything necessary for the perfect shot. So while sliding down a 25 foot tree might sound dangerously impossible to us, it sounds like a walk in the park for the actor. Well, then things went a little wrong. The actor was filming Armor of God in 1986 and in one scene, miscalculated a step, and instead of sliding down the tree, fell face first. On-site medical aid rushed to the scene immediately, but Chan was unconscious and bleeding profusely. 
it didn't help that they were filming miles away from the city center and could only take Chan to a local nearby hospital. Also, because doctors feared that a fragment of the actor's broken skull was dangerously close to his brain, they had to perform surgery immediately. Now, how long do you think Jackie Chan spent in the hospital before returning to set? We know that Armor of God finished filming. It's one of Chan's greatest works. We also know that the scene made its way into the final version of the show. Then, of course, we know that we're talking about Jackie Chan after all. Pause the video and comment down your guesses. Here's a hint. It's less than you think. The actor was back on set in less than seven days. This isn't to say that the surgery wasn't a major one, and that its impacts weren't lifelong, but Jackie Chan knew he had a movie to finish. In his book, Never Grow Up, the actor talks about a slight depression in his skull and a hole where he had to have a plastic plug installed. Other than that, he's as good as he's ever been. Other than that, he's as good as he's ever been. Michael J. Fox nearly hung himself on Back to the Future 3. It's been a few years since Marty McFly hung up his jacket and said goodbye to the acting world, returning to his life as Michael J. Fox. The actor was one of the biggest stars in the 80s, primarily because of his leading role in Back to the Future franchise. The franchise was a huge hit, enough to help Michael have enough money for a retirement before he hit his 30s. So, while the actor is thankful for the franchise in more ways than some, there is one thing he wishes hadn't happened. An unfortunate incident that nearly killed the star of the franchise. This was the third film in the series, and Marty's role had developed. Michael wanted to develop his skill set along his Michael wanted to develop his skill set along his characters and insisted on doing his own stunts for the film, one of which involved nearly choking himself. Now, the goal was for Marty to free himself, save the day, and everything else otherwise expected in a feel-good film. But you have to admit that performing the stunt itself was a dangerous move. Still, the actor found a way to convince the director that he was up for it. After swearing up and down that he knew what he was doing, running over where the place his hands and untightened the noose, and going over safety protocols, the director relented and Michael was happy. And then, he nearly died. As it turns out, the young actor didn't know what he was doing, miscalculated, and couldn't untighten the noose around his neck. The camera stopped rolling as everyone rushed over to save Michael, and just in time. We've all heard horror stories of what could happen if your brain doesn't get its required oxygen, even for just a short while. Michael was a little traumatized. I mean, who wouldn't be? But otherwise, fine, and resumed, film and resumed filming like nothing had happened the next day. The kids on the Brady Bunch almost didn't make it. Everyone dreamt of having a loving family like the Bradys growing up in the 70s. Mike and Carol Brady were very hands-on as far as parenting is concerned, looked after the kids, and made sure all six of them were loved equally. Life imitates art because the actor playing Mike Robert Reed came to love and care for these kids like his own. Which obviously meant him putting their safety above all else. So why is this wholesome tidbit relevant in a video talking about times actors almost died on set? We're getting there. Let's just say that Brady Bunch... Let's just say the Brady Bunch would be missing three if Robert didn't think fast. Here's what happened. For the episode, The Cincinnati Kids, the kids were told they'd be shooting a roller coaster scene. The kids were told they'd be shooting a roller coaster scene. This meant that a camera would be attached to the roller coaster in front of them, shooting them as they made their way through the tracks. Now that's usually how roller coaster scenes are filmed today, albeit with more safety precautions. But a roller coaster with a camera mounted on it was new. But a roller coaster with a camera mounted on it was a new contraption in the 70s. Still, the director assured everyone it would work and make for a great scene. Robert was actually the one who asked the safety coordinator to run a test shot before they actually had the kids film the scene. He agreed, and we're pretty glad they did. Wouldn't you know it? The contraption dismounted mid-air and came crashing down. If the children were sitting in the adjacent roller coaster, that huge and heavy camera would have hit them straight in the head. So, we have Robert Reed to thank for a successful run of one of the most successful sitcoms of all time. Emily Blunt almost killed Tom Cruise. Conan O'Brien once asked Emily Blunt during an interview if it was at all intimidating being in a movie with Tom Cruise. 
Now, for those of you who might not know, the two star together in Edge of Tomorrow. Conan was, of course, referencing the fact that Cruz does all of his own stunts. Every last one of them. And while he knows the risks involved, such as death, he doesn't really care. And that's what inspired Emily to do all of her own stunts too. And she did, and nearly killed the both of them. So, here's what she told Conan. Because Tom insisted on doing all of his own stunts, and his co-star, as his co-star, she felt like she had to do all of her stunts herself too. She's in the driver's seat in one scene with Tom in the passenger seat beside her, and they're in the middle of a high-speed chase. In the middle of the scene, Tom can feel Emily losing control of the car and tells her to brake. He then tells her again, screaming it at one point, and while Emily's trying, nothing seems to be working. So what's the next best thing? Crash your car into a tree, obviously. And that's exactly what she did, and nearly killed two of the biggest actors in Hollywood, herself included. The airbags went off. Luckily, both of them were unhurt. After the shock died down, Emily said both of them looked at each other and started laughing. That's right. She looked over at Tom and said, You were being so annoying. Tom just burst out laughing even more. You know who wasn't laughing, though? Jason Statham. And that brings us the actor who everyone was sure was about to be drowned in the Black Sea, never to be heard from again. There almost wasn't an Expendables 4. The Expendables franchise was a nod to action heroes who made a name for themselves in film in the 80s and 90s, pretty much the revival in modern day action films. Obviously, all that screams Jason Statham, the British actor who's best known for his action packed roles. Now, as part of a star studded cast that included the likes of Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jason and everyone else was determined to do their own stunts, and the actors done plenty in his career most of them having something to do with driving a car. Replacing a car with a truck, what's the big difference, right? Well, during one scene, Statham's character is driving the flatbed truck that they try to escape in, and the scene climaxes with him pulling it over and the team firing on their pursuers. The said piece was actually shot in Bulgaria, and during one rehearsal, the brakes on the trucks failed to stop and it plunged off a pier and into the Black Sea. The actor narrowly escaped when he pulled out of the truck, Jason Statham was a diver who competed for England in the Commonwealth Games in 1990. A skill you wouldn't know would come in handy in your acting career too. 